Jim is just melding to me. Thank you, Jim. It's a really beautiful introduction. I'm very grateful to be here. It's been uh, three years since I came to Grizzly Pair last. Um, and it is uh, beautiful to be back in this wonderful room. It brings back a lot of good memories. Um, so, yeah. Um, I am, uh, Jonah asked me to play some drums with my poems, which was a nice challenge. So I was like, what the hell do I do? Uh, I know the show, but I can't do the show because it's like, it requires a lot of shit going on. So um, I wish I could do that, but um, maybe next time. I have to bring it to Birmingham. How are we all doing? Oh, cool. The whoops. We're good. All right. Um, so uh, I thought I'd start with a, uh, a poem about uh, my hypochondria, which is sort of, yeah, a shout out to the hypochondria <laughs> yeah. um, which is neatly nestled somewhere in my brain. It's all right at the moment, but sometimes it creeps out whenever I have a glass of water in a uh, public place. Um, I start to think of all the things that could be in it. Uh, do you have anyone in your life who is um, extremely objective about stuff, whilst you sort of, any fact just makes you like fall to pieces? Yeah? Cool. I mean, you're one of the two, usually. Like, if you fall apart, then you know the objective person. And, yeah. um, this poem is for both of you. Um, my brother once was telling me how in America there are these uh, brain-eating amoeba, which live in the lakes. And if you swim in the lake, uh, then you get uh, the brain-eating amoeba and it uh, eats your brain until you die. And then, I was drinking a glass of water at the time, and I was like, they're in the water supply. So, this is a poem uh, that speaks to that. Okay, I'm trying to do it with the drums. So. Swimming cures mental illness, said no one ever, in a doorway. Picturing Dad throwing himself down the staircase. That's the title. <laughs> there are brain-eating amoeba in a lake in America. Sometimes America is France. I swam in a lake in France in the brain-eating amoeba that replaced France. I swam in a lake in America. Well, you know, leg-shaped amoeba need vacations too, said the sabbatical nurse, who was made from brain matter, who was made from front. Uh, she held up my mum's teeth in a jar, and she told me to watch my friend as her aftermath of skin cooked in the sun, that I should hope that we could both climb out of the world naked, that we would both look how we really look. You know, the, uh, the brain-eating amoeba that was in the lake in France that replaced America is in the water supply. I'm drinking the lake in America in the brain-eating amoeba. It's now actually, the amoeba is now the size of a bear in my kitchen. I've had enough thoughts to kill a bear once. You, you ever had a, this is outside the pub. You ever, you ever had enough thoughts where if you imagined you just channeled it into like one thing, you just devastate the other At least we're on the same page. The Mika has undone my brain, down to my love, and then my love to nothing in front of an action someone who says, you can't be nothing, but I know what nothing is. I stole something made from nothing once. It was an enlarging gun from inside of a video game. Uh, an enlarging gun for my penis. And I, uh, I shot myself in the face, mistaking it for my penis. So now my head is the size of a balloon. It's taken me to heaven. But there are brain-eating amoeba in a lake in heaven. I'm a new people, did you hear? My anatomy has been replaced by a balloon. I asked my brother in the doorway, is this holiday ever going to fucking end? Can we leave the planet? Can we, you know, I check myself from the planet and he is holding me from a dumb pink bean, a rope from inside the half brain of it, eating down to sets. He's taking me to swim in an amoeba that replaced America. 
America. Once we leave France in a lake in heaven. Thank you. Yeah. The therapist! 
therapist who I thought was my friend Sarah wanted me for a shape project. Circling, she called it. We will spiral and sprawl all that is going on with you out. So in the local desert, can't read my hand right. I can't draw that poison. In the local desert, she draws a circle around me. Three men arrive, shootout style. They aim therapy cannons at me. Guns with microphone ends. Speak your truth, they chant. This is a safe space. No judgments here. Vultures orbit above, waiting for my chunks. Ponder if they want to ingest this kind of crazy. And Sarah is writing her findings in black hieroglyphics in the sand. <laughs> Sarah! I say. But she is deep in diagnosis. Sarah! I yell. Because there's a sandstorm coming in. And I really would have rather just gone for coffee. Save, but you know you can't because trying to save someone is, is stupid. Um, not doable. And you yeah, they'll find a way to still still get hurt, no matter what. Um, so yeah, uh, this is about my sister, uh, but it's for all of you. Yeah. Are we, are we all good? Cool. Alright. <laughs> the thumbs up for the way back. Thank you. I feel like this would have been a lot easier on piano. <laughs> Sorry, Janet. <laughs> to put it in it. Anyway, right. Okay, I'm gonna keep <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Like you do in the local pit! A way of gentrifying the past is to drink out of puddles and call it wonderful medicine. In the photo album of Texas years, we are looking down on a T-Rex foot. Now a boating lake. They sell full flavor ice cream. Now. You are somber in all our family photos. Back then, do you think you jump? Think you jump like you do at the local pit, just around the corner from where you live. Golden Rex 
so my sister um, does a lot of drugs. So uh, each week it's sort of like an update of what one she's trying, um, which is cool and factual. Um, but a lot of the time it sort of comes as a surprise. Like uh, we were in the Isle of Wight, which um, was a terrible holiday. No, no offense to anyone who likes Isle of Wight. Sorry. Just feels like a place that people go to to forget everything. Um, and um, she was like, so I'm off coke now. And I was like, I didn't know you were on coke. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, this is a this is a poem about uh, her sort of explaining one of the one of the drugs, a strain of weed that she smoked, which is called Bubba Death. <laughs> this strain is Bubba Death from a good warehouse in California. I know I'll sit my shit this way, she says. She's thinking of becoming a supplier now that she is invested in what is medicinal and what is recreational. The plan is to become a guerrilla pharmacist, sell to kids who have swimming pools, who, become, who could become a new strain of furniture, soon to be sold in good warehouses in California. Does it taste like California? I ask. She doesn't answer in her dying imagination, fixated on the shoreline in front of us. We're waiting for the drop off. A boy emerges from the water, places a haystack of weed on the bonnet of the car. I know him from school. I can't remember his name. Thank you. Can you all imagine a lawn, a nice square, perfect bit of lawn, yeah? that you find in the suburbs, right? But imagine this big mouth, and it's got like toothache. Yeah, do you ever see it? Cool. Thanks for the nods. Those who love it, feel very together. All right, lawn ache. The lawn aches. Mum wants it replaced with something that can't breathe. A crying man missing my sister has come to install new grass. We dig up the previous animals in preparation, bones in shoe boxes, fossilized pornography. I bury my hearts and lusts in the lawn. The lawn will be scalped for its suffering. I will come here at night with my colonial DNA, sink to my knees, think about everyone shot, and accept, and accept. <coughs> and accept. Past yard, present yard. Dad asked me to imitate rain in the backyard, and this was big. I did my best impression of a shower, held my hand out above the patches, and I thought about all the rain I had in my head from being English. Years and years of it arriving on days Unexpected, but mostly expected, but when it wasn't wanted, I stood there until I got a dry mouth. Parched, I went indoors. Dad told me off, threw lemons at my mouth, but I was past the point of learning lessons from projectiles. I wanted to know other things, new things. But he told me to go back outside. And it was weird because I could see rain coming out of my hand but none of it landing on the grass. I stayed there till dawn, till I got bored, and then I went in, took a bath in electricity, my bedroom TV light and static sound of the muted softcore porn on Channel 5. Nothing moved me, left the top of my body feeling half-baked. But come morning, the entire garden had died. There was a vague sense of loss amid the patio slabs. Dad kneeling in the backyard, shouting why at a shroud of locusts from the past coming in overhead. But they didn't stop. So, so I was checking my set, but thank you for supporting us. <laughs> Huge. Um, this, poem, this poem is about kind of trying to trace where worry comes from and how it kind of plays out as violence as 
um, younger boys in a relationship between me and my brother. It doesn't get particularly violent, but um, there is a sort of slight extreme point. <coughs> Worry drawings. The anatomy for beginners draw yourself sketch pad is depleted by Stefan's worry drawings. One completed every day and handed to Mum. Each self-portrait filled with blue ways as if he's drunk a dead swimming pool. A percentage on the chest quantifying how much panic he woke up feeling. Higher the waterline, less clear in the scalp. Few pictures show water below the neck. The drawings hang in the shed like socks were waiting on to dry. The timeline begins at the day we swam too late and his lips went lizard colour. He couldn't stop shivering for days. And that's swiftly followed by termites that swarmed his face when he was sleeping, bit fire into his eyes and he went to school pufferfish faced and bruised. Questions came like plague bugs. Mum had to tell everyone termites. The day of 95% panic came after we played drowning at bedtime. I asked him to lay in the shape of the worry drawing, and I strangled him until he was pneumonia blue. Mum asked me about the neck bruises. I shrugged and said termites, more concerned at how there was a 5% of happiness I couldn't reach. Years later, Dad, overcome with worry of invisible locusts, takes up shooting and buys an air rifle. He uses the worry drawings as targets. <coughs> Along the fence, a headshotted tapestry of my brother trading, trading water. Just dad on an island clutching his air rifle. 
the amber of Polish water washing up the shore, trying to pull him back to his blood. I visited him dressed in locusts. As there was no world, there was not enough ammo in the world to shoot them from me. I had finally become the grass of the yard, and what had eaten him all of his life was eating me. Was it worth it, was all I could ask. He didn't look at me, only beyond aiming at the hand of clouds of could-be swarms that were coming for him. Thank you.